this is a horrible story, but I have a friend in the San Francisco Bay Area. He's uh, Japanese American, and he just told me a couple of weeks ago we're in January, no, February um, 2014 now. So he told me around Christmas time of 2013 that he just loves California crab. He went out and bought a small, fresh California crab. The season's just opened. And he took it home, and he unwrapped it, and um, he wanted to cook it himself and clean it himself. And he said when he got through cooking and cleaning it, he started to taste it. But he said, Loren, I remembered you. And I went to my bedroom and got my Geiger counter. And he said, I put it on the crab, and he said it went off scale. He said, so I, I wrapped it up to take it back and get my money back, and then I washed my hands. He said, I couldn't get the radiation out from under my fingernails. He had it all over his kitchen, all over the, the counter where he would cut up the, the, the crab. He had it all, all over his hands and his clothes and under his fingernails. So that's a local crab from the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, I'm telling you, the Pacific Ocean is toast. And if we eat anything out of the, the, the Pacific Ocean, if we go swimming, if we go to Hawaii on vacations, we are toast. Well, it, it, it sounds like, from what you're saying, uh, Fukushima radiation is making swimming in the Pacific Ocean along the West Coast unsafe for humans. Is that correct? That's correct. There, I think there's a future for us, but we got to deal with the, whatever happened to the Philippines and Tonga. 235 mile an hour gusts, 195 mile an hour winds, an F4 tornado with a 100 mile an hour that we've never seen on planet Earth before, that shouldn't even be on the planet, should only be on other planets. Uh, now we had exact one just like it at Tonga six days ago, and it it was the same kind of storm. It lifted up the ocean, caused the floodings. 178 sustained wind right through the entire BU, its islands in the middle of nowhere, between Fiji and New Zealand. Uh, but it's devastating that the media never mention it, because those winds are extraordinary, even at 178. You can't do anything in 100 mile an hour winds. You can't hang on to your loved ones at 150. And these people had a big warning. So there was apparently only one person killed that they know about. These people all went in a shelter. Uh, but everything is destroyed. 70% of all the homes are destroyed. The other 30% are, de are destroyed too, but the frames are still standing. That's going to show up in California next. That's going to show up in Vancouver probably. I think California is going to get it probably sooner than later because they have so much isotope on there. The isotopes increases the storm because the isotope is putting out all this energy at 270,000 miles an hour, right? And so the storm, if you got 20 million becquels of this per liter in a storm, that's why you can see those uh, cyclones got up to 235 miles an hour and sustained that even on land because it was full of energy. It was full of energy. It really truly was. And if you were to look at that with certain frequencies, you would see it glow because it had so much energy. These are extraordinary folks. And it's a very bad sign of what's coming to the entire Pacific because it's hemorrhaging out into the ocean. But the Philippines was a little bit worse, I think, because the typhoon, two typhoons converged on Japan, and Japan is contaminated at 300 thousand becquels per square meter and so it picked up all this extra radiation you know through the moisture through the evaporation and once again think about california with 20 million becquels 5 million becquels per liter of rainwater 5 million becquels per second of that rain every second was another 5 million becquels of iodine 239 and there had to be uranium, there had to be plutonium, there had to be strontium because of the magnitude of Fukushima. If you don't know all about Fukushima, I got a video below 
a special one, units 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the ocean, and the jet streams in a 22-minute package for everybody to help you get on the same page because this is 1,045 days ago. This has been hemorrhaging into our ocean and gets picked up by clouds and dragged all around the coastline on top of that by tens of thousands of miles. Strasium and strontium, if it stopped, like today, if, if it stopped today in Fukushima, it would take roughly 200 years to clear to where it would be relatively safe. So if somehow their miracle happened, the finger of God came down and Fukushima stopped, mm -hmm. it would take 200 years for it to be relatively okay. But it's not going to stop. In fact, what's going to happen is that we're not just seeing the death of the Pacific Ocean, and I tell people this, and I disagree very strongly with Chris Busby's comment, that the level of uh, airborne radioisotopes, which is a totally different thing from above ground testing, is equivalent to low level burps of radiation near the water surface bubbled into the ocean or turned into a pyrophoric vapor at that site. Because the amount of total radioisotopes is many thousands of times more than all above ground testing. Number one. Number two, in contradiction to, uh, to uh, Helen Collicott, there are high atmospheric currents that carry 300 times the water at 70,000 to 80,000 feet to the southern hemisphere, plus there's oceanic currents across the equator that have already been detected. It's a whole Eastern. planetary circulatory yeah, system. Yeah, exactly, and there's a planetary circulation current that goes along the coastal yeah. line, and that planetary current takes 26 months. So if you're a Shearwater Gull mm. sitting off Johannesburg, in 26 months you'll actually travel the entire planet. So it's like a cruise line that takes 26 months to go through all the oceans. So... When this really takes off with the really bad isotope, strontium cesium, which is this year, within 26 months, all the oceans of the Earth will start to see a surge of these particular isotopes. All. We're not talking about some. We're talking about all. Now, what it does, and this is something that's really scary and really catastrophic, is the thing that takes off the strontium most avidly is algae. All right? And phytoplankton and algae are only in the top 30 meters, 30 feet, or, uh, you know, roughly 10 meters of ocean water. Okay. And it produces 80% of the oxygen by converting carbon dioxide to oxygen. Uh-huh. So you break what's called a carbon-oxygen cycle. And on top of that, we have geoengineering in the upper atmosphere with nanoparticles 70 to 80,000 feet that are destroying the ozone layer, so we have UVB, C, and D light that are also killing the algae. And we've got increased sun output by the sun of these more toxic energies and the likelihood of a thing called UV strobing. UV strobing is when we have a CME like we had the one yesterday that was next class, the, two days ago. It just whizzed past the Earth, apparently. I just watched it uh, here in the report from space weather at 500 kilometers per second. Detected uh, passing the Earth at 1932 UTC, which is universal time. Mm -hmm. And if they strobe the Earth, which it can do anywhere from six to eight hours, the UV light is incredibly toxic to plants, animals, human beings, but particularly algae. That means the world concentration of oxygen is going to start dropping. Well, it will. Drop we're, we're, I, you pointed this out earlier. We're already oxygen deficient in the cities. It's terrible. Right. So what I'm uh, talking yeah. about is that yeah, we, we have will to be break, forced uh, by Bill. this Hold on, to, please. to go Sorry. into dome cities. Well, that, that wouldn't be a surprise to me. We're going to get um, the, uh, the price of... Um, Atlantic and uh, European and Southern Hemisphere foods skyrocketing, um, and we're going to have the poor um, only in America and Europe only able to eat um, Pacific sourced foodstuffs uh, like Aldi and Sainsbury's uh, sell because they're, they'll be the only reasonably priced foodstuffs. Because remember, we're into a population uh, spike because uh, the third world, um, half of it's under 20. We've got um, the Pacific, which is an enormous um, supplier of uh, food. Uh, the west coast of America and Canada uh, being covered with radioactive rain, which of course means um, the west coast of America produces uh, quite a lot of food, I think, and the west um, coast of Canada produces quite a lot of food. We've got the whole of, Ch um, of uh, Japan, which will become uh, a death zone. So the Japanese will have to uh, move or die. Um, so you can actually see that um, 
the uh, trend is that radio radioactive food um, from the Pacific uh, will be fed um, to the consumer in the West because of its low price um, for as long as possible, uh, like Aldi and Sainsbury's are doing. Um, I, um, I expect I can go around to the other supermarkets and see what they're doing. A decade from now, uh, a lot of the poor in the West will have got um, fatal radiation damage and, of course, will be producing these mutant brats. Um, the price rise of food then uh, will become astronomical um, so we know that um, the uh, future from Fukushima is the um, a massive spike in um, radiation-free uh, foods. So what we get, the trend will be that we'll have um, radiation foods from the Pacific, from large tracts of North America, um, from Japan, of course, um, being low-priced, um, full of radiation. Um, and we'll have non-radiation um, corrupted foods, which will become less and less when the fuel ponds in number one, two and three uh, collapse with um, earthquakes over the next um, um, 10 to 50 years. Um, so, of course, it's Russian roulette. When are they going to drop? We can't uh, get people near enough to save them. Um, and we know that four is um, a disaster waiting to occur. Um, but we do know that um, food, um, not gold, not silver, um, not platinum, not um, stocks and shares in non-radiated food. We know non-radioactive food will and non-radioactive water will be the most valuable things on the planet uh, in the future, and that only the middle classes and the rich will have availability to that, and that the governments in the West will be unable to afford um, to supply non-radioactive water and Can't food do it. stuffs no. to their poor... Now, let, let's get back to ocean circulation in Hawaii. Uh, you, you talked about uh, the ocean circulation, the thermo Hayline layers in the ocean, the von, von Karman vortices, currents, the vortexes where fish breed and hatch and feed, the great, the, the great, con, the great conveyor belt. Is there anything more that you want to talk to our, our readers about so that our, our viewers about so that they, they get a picture of why it is and the mechanism by which this extermination, this radiation extermination is occurring. Yes. Um, first of all, the, uh, this tsunami debris field that stretches across the Pacific is uh, going to destroy North America. Um, there's no way out. Um, it's going to make everybody sick. Um, it, it uh, reduces productivity, it ends up bankrupting an economy. That's what happened to uh, Russia. The Soviet Union collapsed because of Chernobyl. Are you hearing anything in the UK media or the European media seriously about Fukushima? Is there much being reported? Nothing. Nothing. The only outlet for Fukushima is someone called um, uh, Rents.com. I've heard of that before. Even D David Icke's site isn't mentioning it. Basically, uh, it's the elephant in the middle of the room, and uh, it's the end of civilization as we know it.